so that'll be going on uh, tomorrow night. Uh, this Sunday, brother, uh, y'all be pray in prayer for Brother Lonnie. He's going to be preaching this Sunday, and uh, so we want to be lifting Lonnie up uh, as <clears throat> excuse me as he uh, as he's preparing for that. Um, next Wednesday night, uh, lady will be here for uh, it's it's called the Samaritan Purse, and it's uh, she'll be here next Wednesday to talk about. Basically, it's the shoebox that that, uh, that they do. So she'll be here next Wednesday night, and then also after that, we'll have our, our regular uh, business meeting following that. So uh, those are some of the announcements. Any any other announcements that any of y'all could think of that we we have? All right. We want to remember uh, those that are on our prayer list. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry, Jane, you, when y'all want to give us a, a, an update on Miss Sue? Uh, she came home, she was doing well. The doctor did say that he chewed a little bit. She's going to have a lot of pain, but he chewed up so bad. But she's comfortable. She's going to Good, good, great. Um, I'm going to put this out there, and we're, we're family. We're in here. And... Uh, Miss Sue is at home with uh, her son, and um, that's, uh, we really, really, really need to be praying for her son, and this is an opportunity that we have as, an, as a church to make a real positive influence on the way that the, the people visiting Miss Sue, the food that is taken to her, all of, all of that, uh, the prayers, the visiting, all of that for uh, there in her home where he gets to see because, um, like I said, we're just family, I'm just going to share. He's had a bad, some kind of a bad experience, church, God type deal. And uh, so anything positive that we can put out there from a Christian standpoint, from a church standpoint, is just going to be a huge plus and uh, uh, for there. So, uh, in, so uh, anything, any visit, any phone call, anything that can be done along them lines. Yes, Where does she live? Walmart. 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 There's two entrances. First entrance. been out there to her house as well and, and knows where it's at. So either that or even the Yancey's, they, they don't live far from is her, is her name in the black binder if we want to send a card in that black binder? Her name on that list? Yes. Okay. Yes, with the address and all. Yeah. So anything that we can do in a positive way to help influence that situation there at Miss Sue's house with her son would be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated by her. And uh, so uh, be lifting that situation up if y'all would. Uh, uh, Jerry? Sure. No, go ahead. I just want everybody to know that when we started our endeavor and our preacher, we started to serve in the infant stages, I guess you could say. Um, I want to keep you posted the best I can. The thing that probably won't be said, we probably won't give a name because I don't want the information to get back. But we'll try to keep you posted as to how many candidates we've talked to and, and that kind of 
this time. And anything that you want to know, you can ask me or uh, one of the other guys because this is all about the work. Everybody needs to know where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, where we're at right now, we do have maybe possibly one name. And we want to, anybody in here that has a name, that knows anybody, let us have it in a point of contact and we'll see if we can, because you never know who you talk to. And those that don't want to move, maybe they know somebody. So word of mouth will be really good. Uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of the BMA to see what they can, information they can share into how we should go about this. But anyway, we're, we're at, we're kind of at the start, but we're going to keep you posted and keep you informed. No, I didn't know whether the church had heard, but Tommy Hall, uh, he's a, a BMA minister. He's been in the ministry for 50 years. He was a preacher at First uh, Calvary years ago. Uh, he married my daughter. He uh, fell at the nursing home and broke his neck. He's, <laughs> you already knew? Okay. So y'all don't even know who he is, right? He's in our group. Yeah, yeah. He is on the prayer list. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Always take up things. <laughs> yes. Great. Yeah, great. And yes, we do need to be praying for, for Brother Hall um, right now. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Jerry, we, the committee had elected Jerry as our chairman of the search committee and so um, uh, we, uh, we we covered your prayers y'all we really do it's just a, it's a church changing situation for us to elect uh, bring in a new pastor for us so y'all be praying um, every, anyone uh, else that you can think of that we need to uh, put down that might not be on our prayer list that you can think of tonight Brother Ed, yes, I, I don't have anyone to put on there. I put them on there Sunday. But David Eggleston, I just got a text earlier. He now has pneumonia. Mm -hmm. so he's not. He's not improving. I um, I work with the guy that uh, uh, his wife has uh, cancer, and they have two little boys. In fact, one of them is uh, one of Samuel's good friends. Her name is Amity. McDonald, Amity McDonald, and uh, she has now been in the hospital for almost a month. Uh, it's just been one surgery right after another. She just barely got out of ICU um, this week and moved to a room to get strength to go back in to have another surgery done. And so, um, you know, just and. and it, it's, it's hard on them. Uh, Kenny has to, uh, the company is working as best they can with them as far as, you know, um, financially keep him going to keep him from having to, um, you know, you, just to be able to keep them supported and stuff. And so Kenny's his name, Amity is hers, and, and please y'all just, just remember them. They really, really need your prayers in a desperate uh, way. So uh, be thinking about that. Anyone else that you can think of that we need to be remembering, remembering tonight? All right. Jerry, would you take us to the Lord of Prayer? Mm -hmm.
Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the fourth chapter of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, and um, I want to talk for just a little bit on the uh, subject, God's recipe, God's recipe for a happy life. Okay. Now you think about that. Let us soak in, and we're gonna. We're, we'll, I'll go over some points here with you about that in just a second. But God's recipe for a happy life. You know, today in this world that we live in, people are spending their whole lifetime looking for something that never happens. They're looking for peace. They're looking for comfort. They're looking for riches. They're looking for enjoyment. They're looking for all kinds of things in all kinds of things, but they're not looking at the right thing, if that makes sense. And the right thing being God. And, and so that's what we're going to focus on tonight, is where are we looking at for our enjoyment, for our happiness, for our peace, for our contentment in our life? Where do we go? Now, don't get me wrong, you know, uh, uh, vacation is good, uh, traveling off to... I don't know about traveling off Colorado and going fishing is good or not, but anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah, you know, those things are good, but, <laughs> don't throw nothing, but uh, uh, I just say that because, you know, a lot of people today, they put their, they put their faith and their stock in all kinds of things that are out there, and when um, the right thing is right in front of them. And it's within hand's uh, reach of what they're looking for. They don't have to spend a whole lifetime looking for what God says is right here, right in front of us. And so, in Philippians chapter 4, I want to uh, watch a look at verses 4 through 9, and it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, in verse 4. I will, I will say it again, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Now listen to that. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned, or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Now that pretty much lays it all out, right? For, for what God, God's recipe for a happy life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight. And God, I ask you in these next few moments, dear God, Father, that you talk to us tonight, that you'd open up your word to us tonight. And God, that the things that are said here tonight, Father, they would be straight from the throne of glory led by the Holy Spirit tonight, dear God. And that you would speak to us and give us the things that you want us to have, dear God. Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number one, four things that I have. Now, this ain't all of them, but this just four that, that I... That, that we're going to talk about tonight. Number one, God's recipe for a happy uh, life, number one is worry about nothing. Amen. Worry about nothing. Now, I know some people that if they get to the point where they have nothing to worry about, They'll go next door and knock on the neighbor's door and ask them if they got something to worry about that they can get from them. Because it's just in their nature that they want to worry. But God says right here, 
worry about nothing. Now you think about that. Think about this world. Think about all of the things that go on in this world today. Think about the things that are in this world today that tries to take our focus off of God and onto physical and material things that are out there. <clears throat> we have promise after promise after promise in the scripture that talks to us about how God will answer our prayers and that how we don't really have a right to worry. Because after all, what is Satan's greatest ally? It's worry. It's worry. The devil would have you to worry when he uh, uh, over everything else that is out there. Why? Because the more you worry, the less you practice having faith in God. Because faith is the opposite of what worry is. Worry wants to keep you down here in the in the trenches. Faith wants to put you up here, where you can deal with God and God can deal with you. <coughs> So, Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 27. <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 27, 28. It says this. Can any one of you, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? You think about that. You don't think that the you don't think that the scripture knows what we need, knows, and that God's word doesn't talk to us as a personal individual. He says this right there. Can you? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? What does worry do? It's a proven fact that worry ages you. Worry drags you down. Worry makes you miserable. And so he's saying, worry about nothing. Worry about nothing. You know? Now, we're human, right? <laughs> and it's in our nature to worry. We do. It's a, it's, a, it's a natural deal. And if I said it wasn't, I'd be lying to you. Worry is a natural deal. But let me tell you something. When we begin to practice to the point that our worry becomes faith and trust in God, it gets easier and easier and easier to eliminate the worry from our life. So you trust God. Trust God. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, um, Matthew tw uh, 6, 28 says this, And why do you worry about clothes? <laughs> Listen, y'all. I, this is God's word right here. <laughs> why, why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. What's that mean? What's he telling us? If the flowers in the field have what they need, to go throughout life, their existence, and grow and become beautiful and pleasant to look at, how much more do we as God's children have when it comes to us trusting God? If God can take a weed that's growing through some uh, a dry dirt out there and make it into a beautiful flower, what can He do to us? He can make that us that way. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty nine says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Now, if I was to ask you this question right now, how many of you are, I, you don't have to raise your hand, how many of you are just tired? With life. Life just makes you tired. Thank you for raising your hands. But 
you know. <coughs> so, what I'm getting at is this. Life is a tiring thing that we go through. And I'm, I, I love to read what people put on Facebook, the little, the little sayings that come out, the little positive Christian sayings that come out. And there's some good stuff on there if you look at it. And it talks about faith, and it talks about belief, and it talks about prayer. It talks about God. It talks about all these things. But let me tell you something. I love what Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says when he says this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. Now, who is me? Me is Jesus. Did he have an easy road to go? I, I believe uh, Sunday... We talked about um, when Jesus um, had to travel 70 miles on foot to get from one place to another where he was going. Walking 70 miles. Today we think, man, I ain't going to drive down to Huntsville. That's too far. You know? Or I don't want to drive to town. That's too inconvenient. You know? But. He says here, take my yoke upon you, you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Souls. So if we get to the point where we're dragged down, whose fault's that? That's my fault. When I get to the point where I get so burdened down, and it makes myself sick, and I, and I don't want to go on any farther, you know, and, I, and I'm just thinking... What, what good is it anyway? How many times do you just want to get to where you just throw your hands up and say, I'm done with it. It ain't going to matter anyway. Nobody listens. Nobody does nothing. It's all going to fail. How many times do we get to that place in our lives? A lot. A lot of us do. If we're honest with ourselves. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says this. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. So number one about God's recipe about having a, a happy life is worry about nothing. Because He gives us this, what we need right there in those scriptures to get us through that number one. Number two, and we know this one, pray about everything. Pray about everything. <clears throat> You'll, you'll know these scriptures. They're familiar with you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 says this. In part, well, in verse 17. I just want to focus on that one, verse 17. He just simply says, pray continuously. Pray continuously. I remember years ago in downtown Dallas, I walked into a church and this particular church would run about seven to 7,500 people in Sunday school. Big church. Now, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to go to one of them. Oh, that's just too big for me. I'm not going where people don't know me. Well, let me tell you something. It was during a weekday. And I was walking into that church because I was doing a tour because that church was associated with the Bible college that I was attending, okay? And so we walked in there, and the moment that them doors to that auditorium opened up and we walked inside there, those of us preacher boys, you could just feel the Holy Spirit just engulf you. And it's like, wow, you know? And, and, and somebody said, why, wow, y'all leave the air conditioner running all the time like that? And he said, no, the air conditioning ain't even on. He said, well, what, what is that? He said, that's the Spirit. He said, there's somebody in this church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, that is doing nothing but praying for the ministry of the church. 24 hours a day. And when you walk through the doors of that church, you can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and not a soul be sitting around nowhere. Folks, that's power of God when that happens, when you can feel it and not even see anything around you. And so, pray.
pray about everything. Jeremiah 29, 12 says this, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. That is a great promise in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, we have promises in both. And right here in Jeremiah, he said, If you call to me, I will listen to you. I will hear you is what God's telling him. He said, you know, uh, call on me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Isn't that a great comfort to us today? Now, I want to ask you this. And I don't want nobody to raise your hand because I don't want to embarrass nobody. But I just simply want to ask you this. How much time during the day do you spend in your prayer life? Now, you think about that for a second. Do you have a designated time that you pray? Do you have a designated spot that you go pray? Or do you just pray all throughout the day? Or do you do all three? But how is your prayer life? Now I'm going to challenge you all this. If you want to be successful, in life. If you want to be that happy Christian person. If you want to see our church be what our church needs to be. Now let me tell you. I'm not talking about a church that's busting at the seams. I'm talking about a church that is a lighthouse for Jesus. And then everything else. When we become the lighthouse for the Lord. All the other stuff will. That's just a byproduct of it. It will come in. Souls will get saved. People will join the church. Decisions will be made. All of the things and the church will grow. But the number one thing is, first, the church has to be a lighthouse. It's got to share the gospel ministry inside the walls before it can go to the outside of the walls. You hear what I'm saying? So pray continuously. Pray continuously and ask. And, God, uh, uh, and, and then God says, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to listen to you. You ever sit on the phone and talk with somebody and have a conversation? And you sit there and you're thinking. And then you ask this. Are you still there? <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all laughing. You know. <clears throat> I mean, we, we do that, right? You know, because somebody's on the other end of the phone and they're sitting there and they're off in la-la land or it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know. But how many times do we, we, we hear, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. We don't ever have to worry about God being that way. Because he says, you come to me, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to listen to you. Now let me go one step farther on that. When God says, I'm going to listen to you, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to answer your prayer the way you're praying for it. Because God knows what's best for us. And when we say, God, not my will, but your will be done, be ready. Because your will and God's will may not line up together. But when we do what God wants us to do, we'll all be lined up then. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes our will and our way doesn't line up the right way. That's when self is in the way. That's when we, we got to get this thing out of the way. Push ourselves back and let God come in. And then last on, on that one. Mark eleven twenty four says this. Therefore I tell you, I love this, listen. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, whatever you ask in prayer. He didn't say he put no stipulation on that little word right there. He just said, whatever. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, whatever is wide open. Yeah, I mean, it's out there, y'all. It doesn't matter what it is. He said, whatever, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whoa. Now, how many of us in this room today, the only time you ever hear a statement like that is coming from a charismatic church? 
claim it, name it, claim it type deal. Let me tell you something, folks. The scripture does this. The scripture right here tells us whatever you ask in prayer and you believe that you received it, it will be yours. No ifs, ands, or buts. God says it's yours. Now, how it comes, that, that's up to God. What it comes in, that's up to God. But we got to pray. Our part is the asking and the believing. They go hand in hand. Asking and believing. We're not going to get nothing if we rest on our Lord. You know, we, listen, this church started off like gangbusters. I mean, when we were over in the event center, you know, we were filling that building up and, and you could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit moving throughout and people were laughing coming in and laughing going out and everybody was feeling good and energized and couldn't wait to get back on the next service. Now we're being honest, right? We're all, we're all family. Then we move. We get our new church straightened out. And then there's a period of time where kind of a lull set in. And we didn't quite feel that presence of the Holy Spirit moving inside like we did over where we started. Why is that? I began to think about it because I felt it, y'all. I felt it in my heart that I, I, I couldn't put my hand on it. Something that changed. Well, what changed? God doesn't change. Holy Spirit doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. So what changed? We changed. And what happened? Sometimes we get a little complacent with what we have. And it's like, God, okay, we're here. Everything's good. And then when we get that way, the Spirit and things quit quit moving and circulating around like they did. So folks, we got to get back to it. How do we get back to it? We do what Scripture says. We have faith, and we don't stop. You want to see people get saved? You don't stop praying for them. You want to see our church grow? You don't stop praying for them. You want to grow inside your own life? Don't stop praying for yourself. And if you find something that, if you find it hard to go pray for something or somebody, pray for me. I need your prayers. Just pray. Just pray. Okay? So, number one, worry about nothing. Number two, pray about everything. Number three, thank God for anything. Thank God for anything. In Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 he says this Devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful Three things right there in that one little scripture Three Number 1 is devoting ourselves Devoting ourselves to pray. Number two is being watchful to do the right thing. Watching what God is doing. And watching and not letting Satan enter in. And then number three is being, being thankful. All those things right there are in that one little verse. To devote yourself to prayer, to be watchful, and to be thankful. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, he says this, For everything that God created is good. Good. And nothing is to be rejected if it was, if it was received with thanksgiving. You ever seen somebody or heard somebody say, Oh, that person just ain't no good. They ain't never going to amount to a hill of beans. One of the scariest things that you could ever do as an individual is to walk into a prison 
and let them, and you go through the monitor. And when you go through and you get to the other side, mm -hmm. and they lead you into that visitor's area, mm -hmm. and that door shut, you're in there with that people who've done bad things. You're in there with them. But you know what? It's our job. It's our job to lift those folks up. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of pe preachers that have come through the ranks that if were there where them other inmates were at. And they found Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they found Jesus is because a mama, a daddy, a grandma, a grandpa, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, or somebody was lifting them up continuously and praying for that individual. And then, thank God, some prison minister or somebody showed up and led them to Jesus and turned them around. And talking about having a captive audience, you know. I had a preacher friend of mine said, listen, you need to go with me to uh, a service sometime. I'm like, I don't know, I this long time ago. Like, I don't know about that. Well, it's a different thing. Years ago, I had a lady in church. Her husband was bad. This guy was just terrible. He was one of them bad guys. And she said, I really wish that you could go to see my husband. And I said, where's your husband at? And he said, she said, he's in Rusk. And now he was in the bad side of Rusk. And I said, okay. And I'm a firm believer, y'all, that when we call a pastor, that pastor needs to have a pastor's heart. And when somebody asks him to pray, or when somebody asks him, would you go visit? He needs to not even think twice about being able to do it. He needs to go. Because that's part of that pastor's heart that I believe God instills in men to, to do. So I went. And same thing, I walked in there. And I walked down this, this hallway. And, and, and y'all, there wasn't no bars on the door. These doors were shut with glass that looked that thick and pumped, just like this. And that guard took me down there, and he said, right here is where you're going. And that guy's face was plastered up against that wall, that, that, that glass. And, I, and, and the physical side of it, he took cold real, real quick. And I'm like, God, you brought me here. You're going to have to take care of this. And I got in there, and that guard shut the door, but he was on the outside. <laughs> he wasn't in there with me, and I'm like, you, you ain't staying in here? And he said, no, I'll be right outside the door. I said, be too late then. <laughs> you, know, you won't be able to get your key get this door open if I need you. And uh, he said, no, I'll be right here. And folks, the first thing that that guy told me is this. You know, I can just kill you right now before they get in here to you. That was the first words out of his mouth. And God just came, that's, that, that boldness, I guess, of God just come over me. And with the boldness that he told me that, I told him, you can't hurt me. You may physically hurt me, but when you kill me, I'm just going on to heaven right here from this prison cell. And he backed up and he looked at me and he said, what are you talking about? And I said, I'm here to talk to you, not about what you've done, not about your family, not about anything. I want to talk to you about you and your relationship with God. If you was to die right now, where would you spend eternity? And he said, I guess I'd spend it in hell. I said, do you know what hell is? And everybody has their ideal that's lost that think they're right. And I said, let me tell you what hell is. Hell's a place where the fire never goes out. Continuously burns at your body. Hell is a place that the Bible says that the worms gnash at you 
and eat at your body continuously without consuming. Hell is where people are grinding and gnashing their teeth together out of agony and misery. Hell is a place where everybody that you've ever forgot about witnessing to or past witnessing to because you're afraid to say something. I believe one of the biggest miseries of hell is that their voices you'd be able to hear. The voices that you neglected to talk to. That's hell. And I said, now, with that thought in mind, let me tell you about heaven. We talked. He didn't get saved that day. But he listened to me and he let me pray with him. His wife come to me a short time later and said, my husband's getting out and he said he wants to come to church. Well, my first fleshly reaction was, oh, Lord. <laughs> he, he's coming back to look for me, you know. But he walked in, and he come down front, and he said, Preach, you remember talking to me? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I want what you told me. And he got saved. And it just so happened that that, that that day, we were having a baptism, and he went into the waters right there with the rest of them. You see? That's what God wants from Faith Fellowship Baptist Church. He wants us to have that, that boldness, that prayer life, that faith life, that believing that any and any, everything that we ask of God, that God would do it for us. Devote yourself to it. 1 Timothy 4, 4 says, For everything God created is good, and nothing is rejected, if it is received with thanksgiving. Psalms 106, 1 says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And then the last thing. So, God's recipe for a happy life. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Thank God for anything. And keep your mind on the right thing. And in our scripture that we read here in verse 7 and 8 of Philippians chapter 4. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, he tells us right there, I'm going to do stuff for you that is unimaginable. You can't even get it in your mind what I can do for you. And then he says in verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Set your mind on the right thing. What did the what did the young boy say when he told his dad he wanted to take his portion of riches? He didn't want to wait for his dad to die. And the Bible says he went off into a foreign land and he wasted everything on riotous living. And he found himself out there. What was he doing? He was eating and sleeping with the hogs. That's what the Bible says. And what did the Bible say? It says when he came to his senses. People, people have, it, have, have it halfway right when they talk about your heart. Believe it. But you also got to fix your mind on God as well. In the Word. In the Word. Heart and mind. Right? Listen. We got some good stuff coming down the road, y'all. God's good. God hasn't changed. Not one little bit has God changed. We just got to get it on. We, we, we just got to get it, y'all. We got, we got to get it and we got to ask God and we got to continuously ask God and we got to continually believe that God's going to do the right thing by us. We do our part, I can assure you, 
I can assure you without any doubt, if we do our part, God's going to do His part. Period. That's, there's, no, there's no debate in that. God will do His part. we got to do our part. Simple. Being a Christian is not hard, y'all. I'm going to tell you. I've heard people say, I didn't have these problems when I got before I got saved. You didn't have no problems because the devil didn't bother you because you belonged to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Why you have the problems now? You have the problems now because you're doing something for God. You made the devil mad. And so when he gets mad, he wants to come and disrupt you so that you won't bring anybody else over on the other yeah. side with you. Yeah. That's why the devil bothers you. So instead of being upset, thank God. Thank God that you're worthy enough that the devil thinks enough about you to bug you and bother you because you're doing the right thing. Amen. You're doing the right thing. Hey, this, it's good, y'all. Somebody, somebody said one time it just gets gooder and gooder. You know, that may not be right English, but it does. You put it right, God will do it. Amen? We have no reason to be down. Because we have all the reasons in the world to be up. Life will give you what life wants to give you. But God will see you through. Anything. Anything. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> be praying. Be praying for our church. Be praying for our pulpit committee. Be praying for our, our, our guys that will be traveling. Uh, on the road to um, go for some time. Miss Doris to be on the road in the morning. We pray for her. Pray for those that are still sick. Miss Sue. Pray for Lonnie. That between now and Sunday, as Lonnie's preparing to preach Sunday morning, let's pray. Listen, let's pray. We're going to have people gone Sunday. Let's pray that God fills their void and then some. Here in the house Sunday morning. Let's pray for hope. People get it right. Let's pray for victory in Jesus. I mean, anybody have anything you want to say before we dismiss? Tuners and men's prayer breakfast. Thank you. I forgot all about that. Appreciate that. Saturday morning, <coughs> 7 o'clock, 7 30? Yeah, we're starting to eat about 7 30. Okay. The last one was great. We had a great turnout, so show up. Good stuff. A lot of food. Good work. One need thank good fellowship. Good fellowship with, with the brother. Be here. All right. Anything else? Barry, would you dismiss us? Father, well, we get ready to dismiss all of the opportunity that we have come here Father, I would pray that what was said tonight we would all go home and, and we would take this to heart. And Father, I know we're a praying church, but Father, I, I would just ask that uh, maybe there's more, more conviction than what we're praying in church. And Father, I know that there's a tremendous amount of law people in the Prince County. <coughs> but Father, I'd pray that we would get to the point that our concern is about those lost souls. And Father, that would be our primary focus, not only winning people. Jesus, but the discipleship that needs to happen following up with that. So Father, I have to give all these things to you. And you know, you know what's been listed on the prayer list. And Father, I just ask that you would be able to teach and every one of these and you see fit. Sometimes your ways, the word says, are higher than our ways. And if it means calling somebody home, Father, that for them to be healed, Father, I, I pray for your will those endeavors and not my personal will or our will. Father, I lift our nation to you tonight. What a mess it's in. Father, I, I would pray the truth of the gospel would be filled right America. And it would turn back to you. And we would be a nation that you would be proud of. But there's so many things going on now, Father, that, that you just have to be shaking your head. How did I let you get this far? Where did, where did my people go wrong? So, Father, I, I pray for the Bible. I pray for Ben, 
Amen. Amen. <laughs>